Now, Mr. Real Superco asked what makes a fun TD. I have actually, uh, whenever I got the time, I've played Kingdom Rush um, to figure out why Kingdom Rush is so fun to play. And I'm still thinking on that, to be honest. I guess it's the resource mo uh, management and having something to do while you are waiting on your resources. What I miss on Kingdom Rush the most, unfortunately, is to set a target priority. So in our game, what we did, by the way, was this here. You see how this guy cannot attack in a certain direction. That's what we did the last time. And I think it actually works. The only thing that's missing, or maybe not, is projectiles actually being stopped. I don't know how that works. Um, we'll have to check how that uh, happens in balloons. But if, uh, let's say, mm, I guess I'll make a... I guess I'll make a small little screenshot. We can... Talk about that in paint. Essentially, you know what? Let me do that really quickly. The battles also look kind of cool in KR, Kingdom Rush. Yeah, the battles look kind of cool and. Um, You develop, there's multiple ways to do the missions, but oftentimes what I felt, especially if you play on the hardest difficulty, there's one way to play the game. After playing Rogue Tower for half a year, I still couldn't say what makes a TD game fun. I think what makes a TD game fun is having something, having options. So like, okay. Let's say here's an enemy. In this area is an enemy. And he shoots. Like he has his, uh, you know, AOE circle where... Let's say this. And he cannot see my Tangi, right? This right here is his vision range, right? He cannot see in this particular area. But, let's say, there's another Tangi. Let's say he's right here. It's a bit... You know what, I'm just gonna make a better picture. Here's the question. Like this. Okay. Right now we have an enemy right here. And he has an AOE circle. Like this. And so he can attack my Tenji. This is where he can't attack. When it comes to, to this guy. But let's say he shoots an arrow. Add my Tangi. He gets hit. The arrow flies past in this direction and hits him too. Ah, it's it's a terrible, terrible drawing. But let's let's do it like uh, maybe yellow. This is the trajectory of the arrow. And Okay, well, he gets hit once, but we have Pierce in the game, right? So it flies through this guy, and then eventually, because we have Pierce. Eventually, the arrow is here. It basically flew through the tree. I wanted to test this in balloons. 
I know you guys are telling me to use different examples, but I think Bloons is the best thing to take a look at for this. How does Bloons handle Pierce? I wonder if I can somehow place a hero. Mm -hmm. Collecting bananas, okay. Let's see. Ah, it feels good to be back, really, it feels good. I didn't make any progress over the week, so let's see. We have to place this guy here, and then the other guy. Hmm. How can I place him? So essentially what I want to do is hit a balloon here and then one behind an obstacle. Is that even possible here? I don't have enough range. What's the theme of your game? Like what factions are the towers and the enemies? Well, in balloons we have monkeys. In my game we have tangerines, which are like oranges. It is a, it is a weird choice, I know. And it might not work out because of the characters. I'm aware of that. So maybe I actually do have to change them at some point into humans, but we'll see. I would like I would like to keep them though. Like I've thought about this a lot over the last couple of days. But I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, like I'm gonna keep it, but it might might be more successful with humans. But I played Kingdom Rush as well. Mm, I can't place him in a way that, well, maybe here. And I give him enough range so that he hits a unit here and then the arrow flies past. I want to see what happens. Let's see, let's just play. Make it faster, he's gonna hit all of them. We'll go eat some stuff till later. See you later, Mr. Amida. Click the next round, yeah. <coughs> hmm. Yeah, now I can go and give this guy experience. I want to sh long range. That's what I want to get. Now I want to give him more range. But oh, can I not get him here? Okay. <clears throat> I'm hoping that at some point this guy won't have enough attack speed to kill all of the balloons. I need to place him somewhere where he's useless. Shit, I need to place him in a useless position. Like maybe here. Just give me a <laughs> you can even place him there, that's funny. You're trying to figure out if projectiles delete themselves when they hit buildings? Yeah. Okay, there it is. It's difficult to tell. Okay, this is one. But I think it's 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 just gonna fly here. Fuck. Cause he has two peers. One extra pop, let's see. Cakes, time for me to bolt. Maybe I'll catch you coding as I'm coding. Yeah, 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 I will, I will. I'm I'm learning right now, but yes. Yeah, like, so I'm trying to figure out what I should do in my TD game and what they do here. Obviously, they, they had to have thought about this, think about this, right? Huh. I wish I could slow this down even more. I think it... F oh, it just flew the... <laughs> Wait, did it just fly through the building? Buildings block peers. Are you sure? Red this side? You 100% sure? It's 
So I need to... Looks like the collision shape on the building is slightly forgiving. It goes through the corner. No. <laughs> hmm. It does. The arrow did not fly further. It, it did not fly further, actually. Some projectiles get deleted. Some can fly through. Mage, others bounce. Dark monkey. Okay. Interesting. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I suppose then this tree right here with its collision radius. If it hits the collision radius of the tree, we are going to delete the projectile. That's what we're going to do on PS. So I think that is what I'm going to do next. Program next. Okay, I think we can do this. It's just an update uh, check in the update loop of the, of the projectile. Let's do that and then test it out with a very high range. Maybe armor could block it too. Um, what do you mean by armor? Like armor is basically just a check for our damage. Uh, update and draw projectiles. I think it's this one here. Lerp, homing, ease in, ease out, and range, speed, travel, distance. Uh, draw the projectile. Collide projectile. There we go. So, first we need to check for targets, but we also need to check for colliders. Check for colliders. How do we do this? Four. Collider index is zero. Collider index is less than game state. Colliders. Is it colliders? Ah, foliage. Wait, it's level, right? So game state. Level dot foliage dot count. Collider edx plus plus. Then we get the foliage reference const foliage is Game state level dot foliage on collider index. Maybe we call this foliage index. There we go. Now we have the foliage, and then we can check if foliage has a circle. The arrow has a rectangle. As far as I know, the projectile. How do I know? Collider position, projectile collider is a rectangle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Foliage dot collider radius right here. And we have the circle. Foliage collider is a circle or foliage dot position. And foliage dot collider radius. And then if circle rect or rect circle that takes in the projectile rect collider and the foliage collider, then I actually want to. What do I do? Do I have the projectile index here? I do. I need to get rid of the projectile here. And to return. Wait, is it that easy? Don't tell me it's that easy, right? What is the return value of this? Const auto collide projectile. Do I return here? Just break. Guys, I might have to check for the baby. 
Um, I can hear it crying. Maybe my wife needs help. I have to quickly check if everything's okay. Um, I might already have programmed this in. Then we just return here. If we collide with any collider, the projectile is gone. Maybe this is it already. Uh, yeah. Give him a check range, huge one. Not gonna lie, it sounds like a radio station. The sixth of uh, cake seventy eight sounds like a radio station. Bro, maybe in some other country it was seventy seven. True, true. Maybe we should take the time zone of that country. Cake's ID is seventy seven. His daughter's ID is seventy eight. True. Yeah, that would be ID. Oh wow. Yeah, okay. So guys, the idea is that I. Shoot an enemy here and it collides with the tree. Let's see if it works. Ah, he's gonna shoot him here, right? Oh lol! It, 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 lol, it was colliding with the tree! Aha! Uh -huh. Funny! Lol? Ah, because it's the rectangular collider. So maybe I should do point in circle instead of doing taking the rectangular collider. Damn, that's cool. It actually works already. Maybe we just do point in circle. Wait, no, wait. Foliage Collider. I actually need that. What do you guys think? Uh, do we need the circle first and then the point? Something like that. <coughs> I like this. I don't think I've seen many TDs with these features. Bro, in some other country or something. You mean the uh, colliding with... Uh, you mean colliding with obstacles? The thing is, it can also miss. You see that? I think it's good. I think I like it. It's a it's a cool mechanic. What happens now? Uh, it's definitely not behind. I have to make sure that this is behind the tree though, in this case. Yeah. Also, the projectile kind of, I mean, I think it's fine. Uh, what do we do next? I'm going to do a little bit more programming on the game today. We have line of sight. It works. It's funny how it's sometimes. It's cool. Really cool. Very nice. <laughs> this is where projectile speed comes into play. That's it. How about adding some fun? I think we already have some fun. Bro, is anyone watching the baby now? No, it's just uh, somewhere else. Of course, my wife is, bro. <laughs> it's fine. My wife is watching the baby. Oh. 
of course so i guess we'll fix that error here huh <laughs> i mean i guess we'll fix this huh 128 viewers right now no <laughs> um the baby is no longer next to me my wife actually took it so yeah it's empty you see it see this it's empty it's nothing here her is watching her wife took baby and left smart move okay bro my man copy thank you very much for subscribing i'm sorry i don't have notifications today um i'm working on getting them resolved my bot is crashing i don't know why that happens looks like some uh some authentication is failing maybe with uh tiktok Okay, how can we make, actually, when I click on this, I need to deselect this guy. If it's stuck to the mouse, I need to deselect this unit. Guys, um, I'm actually going to take a look at Bloons again. Um, because it's heavily inspired by balloons and i think it makes sense to take a look here on how they do that um i know what you guys are about to say but um, it's really important that we do this because uh balloons is a really good game and um, we want to be better or compatible to balloons right so um balloons is awesome yeah am i even close balloons resources on the screen bro you know like um yeah so yeah I have this guy selected right now. What if I select this? Aha! The moment I leave... I say, look, look what happens. So, we have this here. This info box. Then I select this monkey. Click. And I move him out of the box. And now, the window closes. And the he is deselected. So, what does that mean? Well, it's very simple, you know. Um, if, right, um, if, search, um, selected hero. Doing this has nothing to do with adding fun. Of course it has. Also, it's a bug. Yep, on the terrace, I have uh, conjured a terrain shader and mesh set up on paper in the meantime. Holy shit, bro. Uh. Okay, let's see. Um, if we have a selected hero, which we do, I wonder where I draw... Uh. Is it in... Let's see, mark this as A and draw, attack, range indicator. What is this? Return. Aha! If... Wait a minute. Display upgrades. We draw the attack range indicator in the upgrades, yeah? Mm-hmm, okay. Update hero. Hey? If we don't have a selected hero. Oh, I see. Yeah. Hero lists. Okay. That means green arrow to scroll, go through every hero. If the hero is stuck to the mouse. Stick to mouse, stuck to mouse. Okay. Then uh, game state. Selected hero is nothing. Hey, AQ, thank you very much for subscribing. I'm very sorry. This, I'm very sorry that I don't have notifications today. Um, the bot is currently broken. Oh my god, it works! It works. You see that, guys? You see this? Plop. Watch. 
It works. <laughs> and you know what's even cooler? Watch this. Watch this. Um, claps, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Watch this. So instead of setting this to zero here, right? What we can do is this. Menu animation time. We set it to a maximum of zero. And instead of doing plus, we do minus. Watch this. Now it's going to... Sheesh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's going to do this. It goes in. That's toxic. Um, really super cool. Um, really toxic. Um, it's actually really toxic, I have to say. Um, mm, I don't appreciate that, actually. Mm hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, it returns, of course. Because we don't have a selected hero. I see. It's fine then. Fine. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. Fine. It's okay. These quality of life rigs makes the game less painful to play in its current state, which is also a good thing, I guess. Yes. Uh, quality of life is fun. Yes. Because it has to do with how fun it is to play the game and how... Like, think about it like this, okay? How often do you place a hero in the game? And what is the... Wait, wait, guys, guys, what is the thing that you do the most in a tower defense game? You place heroes. You do that a lot. Okay. And now that part needs to be ironed out and as fun as possible. Now, obviously, once you are done with that, you work on watch it play itself. Yes, you, go, you work on watching it play itself. Now... What I wanted to do actually, and I think we'll do this tomorrow, I want to add a placement grid into the level. So we go into the, maybe this editor here, maybe here. I want to draw the placement grid of this level Meaning there is a bunch of rectangles in the game where I can place my unit. Maybe add a feature to auto placing towers. No, that won't happen. That won't work. Won't happen. Absolutely not. Uh, Maraku uh, Markua Kudav. Thank you very much for following, man. Wait. Actually, we still have a bug in the game. I can place a Tanji right on top of a tree. So, how about we don't do that? What did I just do? Oh. Can hero be placed? Check for collision. Oh, hey, Athano, thank you very much for raiding. Hello, Truto, long time no see. How about auto-selecting them when placed also? 
So the indica indicators, etc., say. Uh, maybe we should check how Bloons does it. How about auto selecting them when placed? So the indicators, etc., stay. What do you mean by indicators, True to Hello, guys. Good morning. Thank you very much for rating, Athano. How was your stream, bro? Dink hello. Obstacles. I got the scene game building on Linux. C game. Oh, my man. Did you use any tutorials or did you try to do it yourself? Like, there's a bunch of great tutorials out there. Like, for example, from uh, Travis Roman has some good stuff. I have a good tutorial on that too, you know. It's not C, C but it's, you know, C++ with a little bit of C. Tutorials? No. Going to release before cakes? Shut up. The vision cone, cones, etc. Basically, newly placed units start out as selected. Oh, you mean... Uh, how does Bloons does it? Yeah. They don't. Interesting. And then, when you select a new one, it actually deselects everything else. And then you place it. Which, I don't know, like, this is debatable, right? Look, you gotta go get food, you're my man. Uh, interesting. Auto select is maybe kind of whack. Maybe. But I mean, your mouse is already on the unit, you can just tap it again. Also, I just noticed when you click on a unit again, it deselects it. Such a cute game, Cakes. Great work, thank you. No, in a uh, non codes. Thank you, man. Yeah, I'm currently. Yeah, maybe we should make it so that we deselect. Let me try it. Yeah, let's do all of these things. Let's first check for collision. Four. She meant balloons, not this trash. Okay. I never read that. Yeah, collector of stuff is really toxic. Uh, he has to get banned at some point. Yep. Nah, like, I forgive him, you know. I he, I forgive him this time. This time is fine. TCAP is actively working to get collector of stuff timed out. Yep, he is. 100%. Uh, oh yeah, this is a level. Mm, where do I spawn him? Um, can he really be placed hero? I guess hero. Position origin, I suppose. If the truth gets you, you're timed out, so be it. <laughs> no, it's not the truth, okay? My game is not trash, okay? That's not the truth. It's just a toxic way of saying... ...demeaning my game, and we don't appreciate that here, okay? Foliage.collider radius. Okay, so we get the foliage as a circular collider. 
And oops, there's two circle, uh, two equal signs. And then once we have that foliage collider, we can use that to collide against the mouse position. And if that's true, we return false. Because we are colliding with an obstacle. Now we should no longer be able to place units on top of trees. Now the question is, how close should I be able to place units? Because I can literally do this, right? Or I could do this. <laughs> now, guys, uh, what do you think? Oh, God. <laughs> that looks so odd. Oh, man. Um, yeah. It's too close, right? So I need to give each unit a... Somewhat of a circular collider themselves. I feel like. What would be the radius though? Four? Circle collision. Let's see. Also, um, I suppose we can do... Put that here. Can't you just extend the foliage radius? Maybe I'm confused. Oh, I could. Yeah, I could. This might be a lot of work, but would be cool to make separate texture for the tree where the top is semi-transparent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's done. You can do that using a shader, can you? Guess who's returned? Oh my man, I'm Mio Mio. Long time no see, bro. How's it going? How are you doing, sir? Long time no see. Let's see. I mean, it does look a little bit better. I'm just gonna extend the circle then what does what is this <laughs> it still looks a bit odd i have to say um ah hmm i'm going to do it like this for now if it's bad then i'll fix it in the future Oh yeah, there's another guy here. Oh wow, I can get really close. Place him behind. Let's replay, uh, restart. Let's see here. Look how close I can get. Still. That's a bit odd. Also the bowl. Look at this. What I think I want to do... Hmm... Just draw the bow behind the hero. At least for the bow. What about the... Um, oh, I see. Hmm. Draw weapon, then bow. Hmm, how's it drawn? It draws the arrow. Activate ability, projectile. Spawn projectiles, draw data, draw sprite, bow layer. There we go, that bow layer. In front of the bow layer, uh, yeah, okay. How do I calculate that? Ah, it uses the layer point. Um, yeah. Hmm. Uh, Matt Coder, thank you very much for following. Hmm. I feel like at a certain angle, the ball should just be behind. Hmm. Guys. Guys. Um. 
Um, I have a question for you. Um, let me figure that out really quickly. Um, yeah, I have a question. Um, attack direction. Minus pi. Ooh, shit. Minus pi. Oh no. Bow angle. Yeah. Um, guys, I know it's another math problem, okay? But um, hear me out. Hello, Dad. Yet? Yes, I am. I am. Uh, I showed the the kids uh, the baby uh, earlier. Thanks for asking, bro. My wife's doing okay. The kids doing okay. Thanks for asking. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you very much. Guys, I have a question. If we have a circle, okay, and we have an angle. Congrats, Prime Gaming. Thank you very much for subscribing with Prime uh, Twitch Prime, Bamboozled. I really appreciate it, bro. I'm sorry that I don't have notifications today because uh, the bot doesn't work. But I really appreciate it nonetheless. Thank you very much. You're being very generous, man. Thank you. Glad to hear. Tell her she's amazing from me. I'll do that. And hello, Pikachu. Good morning. Let's go. So, guys, I have a question. The angle. Okay. The angle. As... The angle as radiance, okay? Okay? Um, if I take an angle of zero, is that here or is that here? Where is the angle of zero? Is it here or here? Top left? Now, top left is not true. Divide by pi. I have my angle zero to the right. So zero is this here. No, guys, guys, the question is, if I have a circle and I set radiance to zero, if I just call A10, okay, if I just do an A10, okay, depends if X is sine or cosine, okay, okay, fine, I mean, we can do it like this then. Is but point. <laughs> Depends on the a ten x y or a ten x uh, y x. I do x by y. No, I do y comma x. So pivot point. Um, we don't have maybe dot render options is outline, and then the ball angle okay so basically it's all uh, done on conventions uh, why is that complaining uh, no matching overloaded function call oh is it options no render options wait draw UI text it takes text position ah draw format Format UI text. There we go. Okay. Let's see. What is your angle? Zero. Okay. Aha. And where's the pivot point? I 
can't see it. But I think it's here. I thought your shader used uh, XY. Uh, I don't do it in the shader anymore. I do it on the CPU. Okay, so the, the pivot point is here. So what I'm trying to say here is I want to see what the angle looks like when I'm shooting straight up. And when I'm shooting to the right. Let's see. Minus 5. Okay. You missed, by the way. Mm hmm. And this guy right here, if he. It's minus six. Okay. So this is two pies, right? Minus 6.2 is two pies. They're missing too much, gotta fix that. They shouldn't have this much range in the beginning. So, this is going to be fixed by adding projectile speed as a stat that you can upgrade into. Okay. And he's minus 4. 6.28, yes. Okay. So now I would assume that if I place this guy here and he shoots down, it's still minus two. So does that mean that if he shoots perfectly to the right, the angle is pi? So why am I saying this? One pi. So essentially what I can do here is the bow layer is... Uh, let's do the if check first. If the bow angle is less than or equals to pi minus pi and actually if it's less than or equal to minus pi. Wait a minute. Your zero is on the left side, yeah. Then I want to put the bow layer is behind the entities layer. Otherwise, I want to put the bow layer to be in front of the entity. So essentially what that means is if I shoot down... I want the bow to be on top of my unit. If I shoot up or to the right, I want the bow to be behind my unit. You see what I mean? And this unfortunately has to be done times two. Now, why do I do behind behind? Behind basically is just a small epsilon on the layer so that it's like basically on top of each other. Um, but the bow is drawn and then the arrow is drawn on top of the bow. It's an actual physical object in the game. So you see this guy right now? He has an arrow on top of the bow that is drawn in the game. Oh god. You see how this... Okay. Let's see. Uh, did I build this? How about this? We do bow layer. Is in front of the entities layer. And if it's behind... There we go. Now, why am I doing this? Because this bow right here... Oh, uh, almost. Almost. It's almost working. So the bow is now on top of the tree. That's why I do this. Because while before it was behind, 
Uh, okay, so we need to fix the arrow. I don't know uh, how I do that. Uh, arrow is in front. In front of the bow layer. Wait, times two? Why times two? That's dumb. There we go. It's a bit odd because he shoots behind the tree. You know, you see here how he shoots behind the tree. Do you think that's odd, guys? Float bow layer equals bow layer? What? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. At least that's fixed. Um, yeah, let's see. Maybe I'll just make this. Can hero... Can hero be placed? Compiler doesn't care. Probe us. Okay, how about we just extend this by four? Position origin and then the foliage collider. Um, if it is in, then we return false. Try that. Okay, now that we have this, uh, I want to figure out how we can make the game fun. We can still get really close here. It's crazy how close you can get. But okay, fine. If he wants to limit himself like this, of course, why not? Or, guys, do you think that every... Lol. Interesting. Can't even see it. Can you shoot here? Wait. Hä? Huh? That's odd. Interesting. It doesn't work perfectly yet. He should have been able to shoot. If I get very close. Let's see here. Weird. Doesn't seem to behave correctly. Hello Cakes, how's it going? Oh, it's going good. Thanks for asking. Uh, I just have a little bit of an issue with my code here. It seems to break. Hmm. Odd. Did you commit? Um, no, not yet. Not yet. What the fuck? How is he shooting him now? Oh, he can, of course. Just git revert bug on, bug on. I don't think it's a bug. I think it never worked before. I don't think I introduced I introduced the bug. Hmm. By the way, guys, so you guys remember how just a second ago we talked about this? Uh, how it is important to have a how do you say that? The game feel is very important. This is part of the game feel. The collision detection here needs to work. That's a cool mechanic. Yeah, I think it is a cool mechanic. Um, need to make it work properly first though. Let's see. Weak, closest. So he should target this guy now. But he doesn't. Think the placement circle should be bigger around the tree here. It shouldn't place it that close to the tree. Yeah, you're right. Um, I think it should be almost like the collision. Like, I think it should be this essentially. 
And then since I know that every hero is about the same, how about you, instead of four, we do eight? Maybe that helps alleviate the problem. A look at that. Okay. Let's see. Let's try that. Let's see what happens. Oh, I see now. I get it. Hmm. So I think what's tr what it what it's trying to do is it's it's shooting the arrow from the point of the bow. But it is taking into account how how do I explain that, man? More unity drama, really? Hello, winter coding. Good morning. Okay, I'll explain. God damn it. So many things. There we go. So if, let's say, there's an enemy here, right? Let's say we have an enemy right here. And this guy's position is here. He can technically see the enemy <clears throat> and shoot him. Okay, that line is not obscured by the tree. That works. Now, the issue is the following. Unfortunately, the bow is a physical object in the game. And when an arrow is gespannt im Bogen, I don't know how to say that in English. When an arrow is being loaded into the bow, it looks something like this. We have this arrow here. Like that. Okay. And it is shooting the arrow not from this point, but it's shooting it from this point here. And therefore, uh, you can see how this point, when we draw a line from here to the enemy, there's a mismatch. That's why the arrow gets stuck in the tree. Sometimes. So. When it comes to archers. I have to do it a little bit differently. Unfortunately. Because of the perspective. Wait. It's supposed to be shooting from his crotch. No. It is looking for line of sight from his crotch because this is where he's standing if you have a top view of yourself in a plane then what you can see depends on where you stand where your head is down so his head is on this point if we look straight down it's penis view or point of view yeah yeah penis of visibility and so what we need to do here is somehow fix this mismatch do you know about pc specs for my game not yet but you don't need much to run my game no in general you mean uh, when you do a certain type of game, you test, uh, you know what type of PC specs you need for your game. Now, what, what I would assume is you just test, uh, you would just test what your game needs. Like it's easy to figure out how much RAM your game needs by playing your game and then checking the task manager and then adding a couple of megabytes to be comfortable. And um, now when building a PC, Oh, when building a PC, nah, brah. Um, <laughs> but we have a lot of people in chat that can help you with this, 100%. Add a bunch of N squared algorithms and you will need much. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hmm. I see. So that's why this happens. But let's see. Um, now I can only place him very far away. He's actually shooting. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, he's hitting the tree with the arrow. So what do we do here? This sucks. For both, this doesn't work. Hmm. What about the pivot point? What can I do here to fix this? Hmm. Weapon position. Hmm. Oh, Retro Maximus. Hello there on YouTube. Good morning. How's it going? Hmm. Draw weapon. Weapon data. Entity weapon data. Mm -hmm. This is just data about the weapon. Huh? I have to figure this out off stream, I think. Think about this. Hit target, trail, collider, sprite ID, default sprite ID. Hmm. Swing state, attack type, weapon type. I wonder why we need that. Oh yeah, we need to differentiate on what to draw. Mm -hmm. Activator. We don't need that anymore. So we could change this out for different data active ability id ah i see active ability id we could use that do we uh got a little baby cakes yet yes we have uh my wife's taking care of it right now um i showed it early on stream in the very beginning it's a baby girl thanks for asking bro Best thing with custom engines is that you can strip out the useless things and do bare bone. I'll get... It'll be as light as a feather on PC specs requirements. Oh, it depends. It depends, you know. You can fuck it up as well. You can make things really slow too. But yes, for the most part, if you are getting to this level... Dude... Talks about baby like a keyboard. Eh, what do you mean? I'm not. I'm wondering if if this PC could run games at ease and also Unreal Engine. I know it's not a full build PC. I'm pretty sure someone in chat can help you with this, but it looks really good. RAM looks good, like the terabyte SSD, like this stuff looks really good. Okay, let's see. Mm. Swing duration, timer, active ability ID. I think we just need the active ability ID, right? And then based on that, we can determine what we do. So we don't need this. Let's see, weapon, data, weapon type, bubble. This doesn't have any special attacks. Though we can do that here. Want. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to redesign this. How do I do that? If we are a ranger. Hmm. But then I also have to figure out the different slices here. Fuck, man. How do I do this? Hmm. Maybe remove the collider for the arrow completely. I was thinking about that gully muscle. Actually, yeah. Mm, gleich. It's significantly easier to make things slow on an already good engine. And and Unity and Unreal Engine already, uh, especially. 
Primarily, primarily what screws up performance is just allocating memory all the time and doing calculations with the lots of entities. Bloon City becomes an unplayable mess at around wave 100. That's because it's trying to figure out which enemies to attack with which attack or with which ability. And so it's probably looping through all of the enemies. Or it does spatial partitioning where it only takes a look at a certain part on the screen for enemies and if it can't find anything it's it means okay there's nothing in here so like you would take this entire screen separate that into chunks and then only do the calculations on those chunks like that's for example how vampire survivors does its first optimization otherwise vampire survivors would be an unplayable mess too hmm Okay, let me see. Yeah, I don't know a solution for this yet. I'll have to think about this. Unfortunately, this needs to be pixel perfect because it's really important. If I attack an enemy and my fucking bow attack lunges into the tree, if I hit the tree here, that's bad game design. Because I visually indicate that I can hit the target. However, I'm not able to hit it. That's bad. Yeah, he basically shoots three times and can't hit the enemy. This is bad. Ah, he shoots two times, he hits this guy, yeah. Hmm. In my game, I always display the time it takes to update one frame so that I'd immediately know if something I wrote is stu stupidly slow. Yeah, I need to do that too. Hmm. Did you make this game? Yes, I did make this game. We're currently working on obstacles in the game and projectiles. I'm currently trying to iron out these two concepts of the game so that it feels good. So we are working on gameplay, essentially. Gameplay features. Hmm. I mean, I could quickly do something that I wanted to do as well. Which is... Um, update level, I think. Or is it update hero? If managed to have it enemies. Display upgrades. Draw speech bubble. Draw hero. If we have a weapon data timer, selected heroes hero ID, update heroes. Selected enemy, selected hero. Uh, no. Uh, where do I select the hero? Here. If we have an hovered enemy, then we select, it, select the hero. Uh, if we have an hovered enemy, we select the enemy. Mm -hmm. And then we can also check if... If the selected hero... Is the same as the hovered hero. Then I want to deselect it. Otherwise, I don't. I don't have an equals equals operator on the ID, but we can quickly implement that. Oh wait, actually we do. Alright, let's see. I should be able to click on this again and then deselect the unit. We can. Cool. What do you guys think? That's exactly like in Bloons too. Again. Obviously it's a lot 
on bloons. Okay. What do you think about C++ for game development in Unreal Engine? I can't tell you because I have not tried it yet. Can't believe it's been four hours. Morning go goes by so fast. Yeah, it's true. It's true. We spent uh, like about two hours on talking about Celeste. Hmm. Yeah, I have to think about this and how I want to do that. Unfortunately, this projectile stuff is going to haunt us a lot. Maybe I'm just going to disable collision detection. Nah, like, uh, I, it sucks because here's the same issue. If I place this guy here, he's still able to hit a unit really fast here, so he can shoot here. Fuck, man, I don't know what to do. Maybe I just disable collision detection for projectiles and they fly through. That's bad, though. Move the blue-orange circle to the bow. I don't know. Why? Why is it bad if projectiles fly through the obstacles, you think? Get rid of the trees? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can do that. Offset the circle a bit when checking for collision. Fuck, man. Or I'm gonna do it like this. Nah, this sucks too. Burn down the trees, screw the climate. Why not use Tangi Center as the reference position for everything instead of the feet position? Because it's a 3D effect. And essentially we do have... We have ellipses. You know... Do it cheats. What are you talking about, Floggy, man? Uh, Floggy, what are you saying? You, you know do it cheats. What does that mean, brother? Shoot at the sky, reduce range. You still have the paint. You can make an offset and make the red line, the white line, so broad, match the same. I still have the painting, yeah. The issue is this. Yep, it do it, it cheats. It do, 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 yeah, okay. Uh, so this is essentially the issue. The arrow gets shot, shot from this point here. And this is where we check for vision. <sighs> Fuck, man. It's more difficult than I thought. I don't think arrow flying through collision a little bit would look bad. Yeah, you're right, you're right, I mean... I was thinking more about... Can I fix it like that? Mm. You can just raycast from the anchor of the bow, which I assume is around the center of the character. Yeah, the thing is, once the arrow is in the air, once it's in the air, right? It has a collider to check for collision detection. Essentially. So, let's say uh, this guy here shoots an arrow towards an enemy that's right here. 
he shoots this way. So this is what I check visually, but he actually shoots from here. And once the arrow itself is in the air, it has its own collider. Oops. And unfortunately, this collider is colliding with the tree here. With this tree's collider. That's the issue. Now what I could potentially do is say, okay, well an arrow has a height and the actual position of the arrow is here. And then it could fly past the tree in front. But then it's difficult to say, well, when does it actually stick to the tree? You know, we could potentially have this shadow here on the bottom. Make it fly like that. Check for collision before you shoot the projectile. This must have a stupid simple solution. Can you set the red line sum up? Hmm. No, because like it it would then it would work for this character, but there's other characters that are melee range who check from the position, the collision from the position. So for example, a guy that uses a sword to attack, he needs to check collision from the melee range, right? So he would just use his feet to check for that. And essentially in a proper 3D game, Obviously, the line where you shoot at, uh, looking from top down, is from the feet. No, he shoots from his penis. Quick question. Are you calculating the vision zones each frame or is it cached? Mm, I'm calculating it every frame at the moment. Because there's not that many obstacles in the level. And I, I'm only taking a look at obstacles that are actually in range. So right now it's fine. If I run into issues later on, I'm going to optimize. But for now, I'm just going to check everyone here. Exactly. Cake ulating? Yeah, yeah, cake ulating. True. I don't know, guys. It's a difficult question. Um, I mean, we can try. Hmm. Let me test. We could potentially do this. Check for collision detection. This is for... This is where we check the colliders, uh, the foliage. And we check whether the position of the projectile is in there. We could say, well... Each projectile has a height of five centimeters, or five pixels. Are you using your own engine? Yes, it is based on this right here. Let me start that really quickly. There we go. My projectile also has a height of 5 centimeters, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Not sure what's the problem if you start raycasting from the projectile spawn point instead of the guy's foot. Uh, the reason for that is the following. Mm. 
I'll show you. Wait, let's mark this as B. It happens here where I take a center point and I draw an ellipse around that center point. Um, um, let me think. If... I'll show you. I'll explain it to you. Um, let's see if I can do that. Then you 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 will got you guys will understand. Uh, I need that, and then bowl, like this, think the pivot point never changes, right? No, it does not, okay. It's a little bit of setup, but it will all make sense in a second, okay? go now we have this mm. uh, it will look weird guys uh, trust me that's why I don't do this mm. POV at point yep <laughs> Gonna change that, okay? You know what? Uh, okay, wait. Ah, shit, I shouldn't do that actually. Give me one second, okay? Sorry about that. Uh, weapon. Weapon data. I need to get rid of this really quickly. Then fix this issue. Come on, please. Fix this issue here. There we go. Um, I want to quickly build, commit and push, and then do this change, because then I can just revert. You could use do the same uh, way FPS games do it. You have real projectile and a fake one. You render the fake one, but the real one you check for collisions. Okay. Interesting. Oof. Uh, don't know what I did. Don't know what I did. It's fine though. Push. No. There we go. All right. Now, gonna quickly have to do the setup again. Pivot point. Pivot point. I'll show you what the issue is. Now I can actually do some crazy dumb shit. Okay, and instead of the position origin, we do weapon data dot pivot point. Okay. Now, here's what happens. I think this is everything I need to do for this to work. This is what happens. Which graphics uh, lib uh, library are you using? I'm using OpenGL, bro. Here, so... Yeah. Okay, so you guys can't really tell what's going on here. But I'll show you. Mm -hmm. 
Let's make the range a little bit shorter. Like it used to be. Okay, 28 range. That's what I did here. That was 150. Now watch what happens. Okay, I hope you guys can already tell what's happening. But I'll show you. Hello there, cruise boy. Good morning. <laughs> you see what the issue is? Should I make it faster? <laughs> you see this? That's why I don't want to put it on the point where the arrow actually flies off. <sighs> this is shit, yeah. That's why I don't do that. <laughs> put it in the Tangy Center. Um. Hmm. No. I think it will look odd. Kind of unique. <laughs> I'm telling you, this top-down collision detection shit is really annoying. I've been dealing with this for far too long. You now, anyone that's just making a top-down... What is it called? Tower defense game has such an easy time because everything is just around the center. For me, it's not the fucking center. It's where they stand. But it's a Stardew Valley type of... Oh, I wonder how... Like, can you shoot bows in Stardew Valley, guys? How is he doing it? Am I just that dumb? Is there a way to shoot bows in Stardew Valley, by the way? Avoid Tangy Center 2. Okay, we'll try. Okay, we'll try. Let me see here. Offset. We have the Wrecked Collider. Let's just test. From the center. Ranged unit could use the center point of ball rotation. As uh, super cool suggested. Yeah, because then, I mean, yeah. Ranged units could do that. Let's see. But the point, the problem I think is that now all of a sudden this circle is drawn in the wrong location. It will work. But you can, hopefully you can see that the bottom part of the circle is shorter than the top part of the circle. The unit, now the drawn, the, no, the circle is drawn around the middle of the unit. However, for every other unit, the circle is drawn around the feet of the unit. Which again makes it shit. Either I do this for every unit... What exactly is preventing us from using the center and just have projectiles fly through trees? I don't know. Yeah, but counterpoint, pure top down looks like ass. Yeah, it does. Hmm. It's a difficult approach, I have to say. I don't know. Cake's wife, you saw my wife? What? <laughs> we often want too much correctness for 2D games. They always were hacks. You just want to be fair. Yes, I need to have a hack that's fair. And that is fun. That's making the game fun to play. True. You can always copy the block code for just the archer and save yourself. If it's the Archer do. You could always copy the code block for just the Archer. Hmm. 
Hmm. Difficult to say. Man. Fuck, bro. It's difficult. So what I need to do essentially is have a projectile that is flying from the feet to the enemy in that line and have my projectile follow that trajectory. Correct? But at an offset. So I think what, what that means is the following. But that's bad. Wait a minute. Can you project the location? Wait, wait a minute. Let me try something. If I take the position here, right, like always, and then do ball, instead of the center, we just set the center to the position origin. We just set the center to where he stands. And then obviously the bow will look a bit odd. It's off, right? The bow is off. However, however, I think what we can do is hmm Now it should rotate correctly, but I just need to draw the bow higher, right? Let me see how that looks. Weapon position plus vector 2. Zero and then entity. Collider. Rec collider. Dot offset. Dot y. Okay, let's draw that. Now it should be higher again. Let's see how that looks in terms of rotation. I'm playing around right now, but we'll see. Yeah, the arrow is in the wrong location. It shoots from the bottom, which is correct. I just need to draw the arrow in a, in a different location. I think AQ has the best solution. I think AQ has actually the best solution. We... We project... We just draw a real projectile. And then we draw the other projectile at an offset. Never found your code. Hello there on YouTube. Yeah, I think... So essentially we'll do this. Um, let me undo a couple of things here. If this guy shoots in this line, right, and he aims, let's say, with his bow in this direction. Let's make that thick, like Chad's mom. If he aims in this direction here, okay, then... The real arrow is going to fly the red line, but the yellow arrow flies this line. This is where the yellow arrow will fly. I think. Or the yellow arrow will fly this line. It's difficult to say. Hello, Cakes. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Robin Nutzler. How are you doing? Uh, how are you doing? Thanks for asking, bro. We just had a baby. And the baby is good. My wife is feeling better. She's still struggling a little bit with strength. But it's getting better, which is nice. Thanks for asking, man. Congrats. Thank you. We have a similar issue in... 
DRG Survivor. Our flying units collide not from their 3D model, but from their projected ground position. It's the best compromise we could think of. Yeah, I need to project the arrow on, uh, on to the bottom. And then I don't know about the visuals because like, for example, if I put the arrow always like this, then what's happening ultimately is the arrow visually is going to be on uh, it's going to, it is going to fly over the unit but still hit so for example right if the if this is the projected flight path oh no if this is the flight path of the arrow and this is the real flight path in the world then if there's an enemy here uh, actually if there's an enemy here like the crawling skeleton. Like it's gonna miss, you know? It's just gonna fly over his head. Lessons from our game, people accept the disconnect, no one cares. Yeah, okay, fine. We're going to project this down and then I will turn this line like this, I think. I think it's fine. Our bullets even do impact VFX in midair below the flying creatures. Oh really? Interesting. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try out this line here. This. If that doesn't work, then I'm just gonna not make it so high. I don't know. We'll see. The arrow has a linear speed. Could you learn between visual and real? Mm. I think it's fine, AQ. Because if I, I'm just gonna move towards the end point always, where it is. And if it's, if it's actually following the enemy, then I can still lerp that end point. Yeah, if you know the end destination of the arrow, you could lerp it. I don't know what that means, actually. Lerping the end destination. What does that... How does that work? When it reaches the enemy position T, it should be 1. So, okay, you mean... Um... Essentially like lerp the visual towards the rear so that they are identical at T1. Okay, so I see. So the real position is I get it now. That's actually smart. Lerp, yeah. We'll try that tomorrow, for sure. Lerp. Visual. Two. Real. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay, guys. I've got a lot of stuff to do still. I hope you had fun. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna do a nice react, like always. And then we are going to tackle this arrow problem. We'll figure out different ways to do it. And uh, yeah, test it out. See how it works. Guys, thank you very much for joining. I really appreciate it. See you tomorrow. Peace. Bye-bye.